Welcome to our broadcast. Thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about standing your ground. Uh, in, a, in, in a time where we live, there's a lot of resistance for people who really are walking with God. And uh, when you understand that you were not just born to live a life and just be happy, but you understand that there's a much deeper purpose to your life. God puts you here for a reason. Uh, you could have been born 2,000 years ago. You could have been born 100 years ago. But you were born right now for a specific purpose. And when you understand that and you realize that God has you here for a purpose, you begin to live different. Uh, you begin to understand that, uh, that uh, what I do is significant. I influence people around me. Not, 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 not by, uh, if, I don't even have to be on media and everything, but people around me are influenced by the positive and by the negative. You can be an, uh, somebody that destroys people's lives. You can be somebody that builds people up that builds people, people's faith. Our lives are very significant. And the way I live does so much to the people around me. Uh, if I walk in righteousness, my, my uh, children and people around me look at my life and they say, That's, that, the, I want to be like that. I, they see the fruit and they, they can, uh, it, it, it influences them. But if I walk in wickedness and I uh, do things that are unacceptable, I can destroy people's lives in, in very, very quickly. So God wants to use us. And in this time, God wants to us to stand. And you have a, a, a purpose to fulfill. You were not born by mistake. You were born because God has a purpose for your life. Uh, and, and that is it, it's when we understand that. It, uh, it, it, it strengthens us. It helps us to live differently. Uh, you have to understand that thief, the devil, comes to steal, to kill and destroy. And he wants to destroy you. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life. And we're not talking about just enjoyment and happy, fun life, you know, a uh, uh, woolly feeling kind of thing. We are talking about having a uh, uh, real life, life in this life and eternal life. And, um, and when we understand that, it, 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 we live different. Uh, we begin to pray different. It, 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 it uh, makes our lives uh, just, we, we, we see things different. We're willing to sacrifice to see the things of God actually take place. But I want to uh, read a, a scripture to you from um, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19. And it says, uh, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power who believe in Him. Uh, God's power in our lives is incredible. Many people are way below where they should be living in the power of God. God wants to use us in a, in, in a, and have the supernatural power of God manifested in our lives. And then it says, this same, this same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor uh, at God's right hand in heavenly realms. You've got to understand the same power that came down on the dead body of Jesus in the grave after three days being dead in the grave, that power that made his body come back to life, resurrected him from the dead, is the power that's at work within us. And that is incredible power. That is power and, and, and that, that, uh, that, uh, that makes death, dead things come alive. And, and God has given us that power. I, I've seen it manifested so many times. Uh, you pray for people and they're healed from incurable diseases. And it's not hard. It just, it just happens. Uh, I've seen God's miraculous power manifested and, and it's wonderful. Uh, but then it says, uh, now, 
Jesus is far above any ruler, authority, or power, or leader, or anything else. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. Jesus is far above. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. So you have to understand, when you serve God, you serve the highest authority. It is an authority that is above every government. It is an authority that is above every demonic power. It is an authority that, that is above every name that can be named. Uh, and this is, this is powerful. That means not that we rebel against governments, but it does mean that we are in an authority that is above them. We can pray leaders out of office. We can pray leaders into office. We can pray that God will change the heart of leaders. And I think this, in our generation, with so much wickedness going around, we need to be praying that either hearts will be changed or God will remove people uh, from office and, and that people will, uh, will uh, you know, really serve the living God. We serve an authority that is above all, uh, the authorities of this world. And then if you go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, it says, And he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in heavenly realms, because we are united with Christ Jesus. That means that we as Christians, God raised Christ to the highest authority and we are raised with Christ to that place of authority. That means when we pray, we pray with an incredible authority. Many Christians don't understand the authority that they are in and they live a life that is way under what they should be living. And I just, I, I, um, early in my ministry, when I started preaching, uh, I was uh, ministering in, in Kenya. I, I was there for, for a half a year and, and I just traveling, doing all kinds of ministry. But I, we were having this gospel campaign in the northern part of Kenya. It was a semi-desert area, very, very hot. And it was not a humid hot, it was like just desert heat hot. And so during the day, in the middle of the day, everybody would try to find the shade of a tree and sit on, in the shade because there it was cooler. You could kind of, uh, you could hold, you, you know, it was, uh, it was bearable. But if you went out in the sun, it was scorching hot. And um, so uh, I was ministering up there and we were having services every evening. And during the day, I was trying to prepare but I, I wouldn't go in any house because in, in, there was no air conditioning and all the houses were so hot. It was like a stove in there. So you, you had to go outside under a tree and in the shade somewhere. That was the coolest place. And uh, so I was outside preparing myself, getting ready for the evening service. And, uh, and so these kids come around and, you, you know, uh, being a white boy, uh, I, was, I stood out like a sore thumb because uh, all the, the, these were Turkana people, all uh, African people, and, uh, and they had not seen a lot of white people. So I was, uh, they, they found me very interesting. They, they wanted to touch my hair. They, they wanted to try the few words of English that they had learned in school on me and uh, they wanted to engage with me. And I, I was trying to concentrate here. And, uh, and so one of the young men, uh, uh, that was there, he, he grabbed a stick and he went at these kids and said, hey, kids, get out of here and, and leave, leave, uh, uh, leave us alone here. And, and the kids just ran off. And um, so I thought, wow, that worked pretty good. Uh, and, you know, didn't hit them, but he was just, you know, threatening with a stick. And they understood that language. Uh, and so uh, uh, I, I, the, the, they, uh, you know, some of these guys went away and the kids were still there. And as they went away, these kids started coming around again and, and uh, I just couldn't concentrate. And so I thought, man, you know what? I'm going to try what these guys tried. So I, I, I found the stick and I took the stick and I said, hey, get out of here. You know, and, and these kids just scattered. You know, I wasn't going to hit them. But, uh, but I just thought, you know, I, I, maybe I can disperse them a little bit so I can get some quiet, so I can concentrate. And all these kids dispersed, uh, except one. And this one kid just stood there. 
And uh, so I lifted the stick again. I said, hey, 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 come on. Because, you know, trying to, but he just stood there, basically folding his hands and, and, and just, just defiant looking at me. And I thought, man, this is a bold little guy. What, what's going on? And uh, suddenly one of the guys uh, nearby, he said, hey, Chris, uh, don't mess with that little guy. He's the son of the chief. And I thought, wow, imagine this little guy would not run away from any kind of intimidation because he knew who he was. He knew I'm the son of the chief. You mess with me, you're messing with my daddy. And my daddy can kick you out of this place uh, faster than you can uh, ever imagine. In Africa, a chief has power. And uh, he, he, if he kicks you out, you're out. And, uh, and, and this little boy understood who he was. And you know, when we walk with Christ, we need to understand who we are in Christ. The devil has no authority over us. We have authority over the devil. And we can stand in God's authority. We don't need to be manipulated by society. We don't need to be manipulated by, by what's going on in our world. We can stand firm and be who God called us to be because we stand in the highest authority. And that is in the authority of Christ. We can speak to demons. They must go. We can speak to what's happening in our world and things must change because we are children of God. God loves you. You're the apple of his eye. If you, walk, if you are born again and you love God, you're serving him, you are precious in his sight and he will stand with you. But understand who you are in Christ and stand for this generation. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that you called us for a reason. You called us to serve you. And I pray, oh God, that you will help us to understand who we are in you. You bought us with your precious blood. You love us. You love the world so much that you sent your son to die for us, to take our place. And Lord, we thank you for that great love. And Lord, we thank you that we can love you back and that we can live for you and that we can live a life that we will not be intimidated by the enemy. We will stand strong and we will fight the good fight, the fight of faith, because this generation must be saved. Thank you, Lord, that we can love you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for joining us today. Let me just see if I can pull this up, see if any uh, uh, who's, who's been on here. Good to see you. Uh, I'm seeing Melissa. I don't know who else was watching, but anyway, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, the Lord bless you. And uh, remember, Christ is the answer. And uh, uh, if, you, if, if this has been a blessing to you, share it, like it, uh, so that others can be blessed. We love you. Uh, God bless you.